Is it just me or did the games finish like a week ago? I feel like a week ago I finished my 30th and final snatch at the standard and now I'm here to, in my barn talking about more snatches for the open. Not cool, Dave. Not cool. Welcome back guys to the 2020 season. Who's excited? Everyone raise your hands. Yeah, no, no one's excited. It's way too early in the season. We're gonna get used to it, but whatever. All right, here we are. It's October and we're doing the Open. So we, they just released 20.1, the first workout of the 2020 season. So I'm gonna write on the board, kind of talk about some things I saw looking at Scott and looking at Rich and kind of discuss that from my perspective and then maybe compare it back to some folks who maybe aren't elite category and don't really care too much about Scott and Rich and they're a great score. and might just be like, I wanna get a good score in the gym and relate it back to you guys. So, let's get started. First of all, what is 20.1? 20.1 is a 10 round workout, right? So we're doing 10 rounds for time. We've got eight ground to overhead, GTO, and then 10 bar facing burpees, right? We have a 15 minute time cap. So we're briefly looking at this workout. This time cap, I would say, is actually fairly aggressive. Um, watching Rich go, and Rich is, to my, my mind, is one of the fittest guys in the world, and if Rich goes around a minute um, and gets 10 minutes, that means like a lot, there's a lot of mortals out there, including myself, that are not gonna probably be around Rich, and so 15 minutes is actually somewhat of an aggressive time cap for a lot of people. So bear that in mind, don't watch these guys and think, oh, Rich got 10 minutes, cool, I'm gonna get 9.45. Like, Rich is a pretty solid athlete, so it's probably an aggressive time cap. All right, so let's get into it real quickly. How should you warm up for this workout? Watching this workout, the first thing that's gonna really jump out to my mind, first things first, is the idea that you're doing 80 ground overhead and 100 bar facing burpees, right? So we're doing an 80, cumulative of 80 here and 100 here, right? So what jumps out to me right off the bat is if I told you, hey, do 80 ground overhead, you would really focus on warming up your forearms quite a bit, right? Because you're gonna have to grip and rip a lot unless you do singles. And then if I told you to do 100 bar facing burpees, you would probably warm up your lungs a little bit, right? So jump on a bike, do a couple aerosol bike sprints, warm your lungs up, prepare for the fact that your lungs are gonna hurt and burn. But at the same time, one thing that's overlooked quite a, ba quite a bit is your actual lower back, right? So I think you need to focus on warming up your lower back quite a bit, right? Because not only are you using your lower back on bar facing burpees, like it's, it's overlooked on bar facing burpees all the time, your lower back. But not only that, but you're also gonna be doing uh, some hinging on ground to overhead. Now, regardless if, if you're doing snatching or clean and jerk, it might affect a little bit. Your lower back may not be used as much on a clean and jerk. So, if you're in the middle of this workout and you didn't warm up your lower back and your lower back blows out and it's gone and she leaves, right? Then if you're doing snatches, I would recommend switching to a clean and jerk because sometimes it's a little bit less lower back than it, than in, as in using the snatching because it's kind of like one fluid motion. So the clean and jerk allows you to kind of give that back a little bit of a break. Um, all right, so if you're warming up, obviously the first thing I'd say is do forearms, warm your forearms up good and nice, and then your lower back is huge. It's probably gonna be really mistaken. And then make sure your lungs are warmed up because it's gonna suck, right? All right, so now we've talked about how we're gonna warm up. Let's talk about the idea of pacing for this, right? So pacing for this is the idea of, you could start out really hot, and the <laughs> Scott and Rich, I thought, actually did that, right? So their first round, their first round was like 41 seconds. Right, their first round was 41 seconds and then it dropped to 50 and then dropped to like 55. And so over the course of rounds one through five, they averaged, I think Scott, I took Scott's score mostly, averaged around 51 seconds per round for the round, uh, rounds one through five. And then rounds six through 10, he was around 60 seconds, right? And honestly, like in terms of, if you look at this and you, you find the delta, right? What's the difference between them? You're looking at like nine seconds, right? Looking at a nine second difference. That's actually not too bad. That's really good considering like, you know, you want perfect averages, right? You want perfect averages or negative splits, but in a workout like this, you're not gonna get perfect averages and you're probably not gonna get negative splits because you're gonna at the rounds seven, eight, nine, and 10, if you watch Scott, like, it's not necessarily his lungs look like he's exploding, like he looks like he's out of breath and dying. It looks like his grip and fatigue is, is killing him a little bit. So honestly, nine second split between his averages of one to five and six to 10 is really, really good. So Scott, if you're watching this, I'm complimenting you. I'm really impressed. 
Come find me sometime, I wanna give you a hug. Anyways, I thought it was super impressive, his splits there, I thought they were really good. Like, you can't ask for anything better than that, if I'm being honest with you, like, that's, that's, that's pretty good. Um, so, those are his round splits. Let's talk about, kind of break it down to each movement, right? So if you break down by movement, let's talk about this, the grunt overhead, right? Obviously, I recommend snatches, it's gonna be faster. Um, if you're looking to go to a sanctional or you're looking to qualify the open, you're gonna have to snatch. That's just the name of the game, right? You're gonna have to snatch. Um, if you get near the end, you can switch to a clean and jerk near the end because your grip is just completely shot, like in rounds nine and 10, it's probably fine. It's better to switch to clean and jerk and be able to at least move efficiently than not move at all and just be like, I can't, I'm doing singles on snatches, right? Bar facing burpees, we are allowed to step up to the bar. So take advantage of that. Like that's a game changer, right? Instead of having to jump two feet to your hands like we had to do in years past, now you can step with a foot. So take advantage of step to a foot. It's gonna be much more efficient. I know you're thinking, well, it is slower. Yes, it is slower, but again, you're doing 100 bar facing burpees. So who cares about slow? Efficiency is the name of the game. Okay, so overall, in terms of this workout, if we look at it, I would say, obviously, I mean, I've said it before, and some people are gonna be like, that's a stupid thing to say. Don't start out out the gate going ham. Like it's not gonna do you any good to go out completely ham out the gate. Now, was 41 seconds out the gate for Scott and Rich a little bit ham? Yeah, probably it was a little bit ham. But you know, they have a crowd, they have, he's doing this to Rich Froning, Froning's doing it next to Panchik, like those people cheering, like you know, you can't blame him for that. So tomorrow, for instance, I'm doing 20.1 next to Noah Olson, which is, He's a, obviously a great competitor. He was sick at the games this year. He's amazing. And so you, probably the same thing's gonna happen to me. Noah and I are probably gonna start out a little bit hot and then regret it in the final rounds. But really, if you have a chance to sit down and game plan it and strategize it, I would say start out a little slower than you think. Because if you look at it, drop my pin. If you look at it, if you, th if you actually look at Scott's score, if Scott does a 55 second per round, okay, for all rounds one through five and six through 10, instead of starting out really hot, he actually gets a better score. Now, I realize there's obviously kind of degradation, right? Like he's, he's gonna get worse, like you're gonna get tired. Like it's, it's gonna start at 55 and probably dip. I understand that. But my point is this, like you don't have to start out super, super hot, right? You can start with an average good score, keep it, and you'll still get a good score in the long run. So, hopefully that helps out, guys. Warm up your forearms, focus on your back, don't start out too hot, have a good time, find someone fast to do it next to, and most of all, get some Cheetos after you're done, grab a Coca-Cola, and watch everyone work out and laugh at them as they all suffer after you're done with yours. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you guys later next week, I guess. Um, sometime around there.